The Doman LZ-5 sits at the center of one of the most unusual chapters in American helicopter development. Its story begins with Glidden Doman, a young engineer from Connecticut who left Sikorsky in 1945, convinced he could build a smoother, simpler rotor system. He formed Doman helicopters and began experimenting with a hingeless, gimbaled rotor head that eliminated traditional flapping and drag hinges. Early conversions of surplus Sikorsky airframes proved the idea workable. Vibration dropped sharply, stresses decreased, and handling improved. By 1950, Doman was building full prototypes. The LZ-4 showed commercial promise, but the real leap came with the LZ-5, a general-purpose utility helicopter sized for eight people. Its supercharged Lycoming 580D engine sat beneath the pilots, cooled by an exhaust ejector system that saved power and effectively increased payload. The drive to the rotor passed through a fluid starting clutch. Above it, the hallmark Doman rotor carried soft and plain blades and a fully self-contained servo system in the hub. No external plumbing, no hinge dampers, and no flapping hinges. The tail rotor mirrored the same philosophy, hingeless and free-floating to reduce stress in rapid yaw maneuvers. Structurally, the LZ-5 used a tubular frame with metal skin, wide sliding doors, and a quadricycle undercarriage with dual wheels on the main units for rough field operations. The 48-foot rotor produced respectable performance, cruise near 86 miles per hour, top speed about 105 miles per hour, range roughly 245 miles, and an absolute ceiling near 18,000 feet. The United States Army ordered two evaluation aircraft in 1952 under the designation YH-31. The first flight took place on April 27, 1953. Testing praised smoothness and handling, but field units worried about maintaining the unconventional rotor system. The Army ultimately decided it had no need for another piston helicopter in that size class. The YH-31 saw staff transport duty and were retired in 1958. Doman pursued civil markets aggressively. A joint company with Fleet in Ontario produced a Canadian-built LZ-5 that earned United States certification in 1955 and Canadian approval in 1956. Demonstrations across North America and Europe, including the Paris Air Show in 1960, drew interest but not orders. One aircraft gained full blind flight instrumentation and was promoted as a trainer called the D-10. Concepts followed for improved variants such as the turbocharged D-10B, and production rights were discussed with Hiller in the United States and Ambrosini in Italy. Proposals ranged from Italian final assembly to fitting turbomeca turbines. None reached the factory floor. By the mid-1960s, the market had swung decisively to turbine helicopters. Financing evaporated. In 1969, Doman Helicopters closed after 24 years of experimentation. The technology lived on indirectly as Doman moved into wind turbine design, applying rotor dynamic lessons to energy systems. Today, one surviving LZ-5 and an R-6 fitted with a Doman rotor sit at the New England Air Museum in Connecticut, tangible reminders of a bold attempt to rethink how helicopters handle vibration, balance, and control. The LZ-5 never entered production, but it pushed rotorcraft engineering toward quieter, smoother flight at a moment when the industry was still discovering what helicopters could become.